Hey everyone, it's Carly Hall, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to remove ink from your Epson EcoTake printer and replace it with whatever type of ink you want. Hey everyone, it's Carly Hall, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to remove ink from your Epson EcoTank 15,000. This video will walk you through the process for this specific printer, but follow along if you have a different Epson EcoTank that you're trying to empty out because the process will be very similar. It's just a little different on how you take it apart and put it back together. So we will take this all apart, suck out all of the existing ink and replace it with a different type of ink. So if you are trying to unclog a clogged print head or you're trying to swap out your ink for a different brand or a different type of ink altogether, this video is for you. Here's what you'll need to get started. I ordered these big syringes on Amazon. I will put the exact link in my video description because Without these, this process would have been a nightmare, but with these, it ended up only being about an hour project start to finish. So you'll need these syringes, these big 60 milliliter syringes. You'll also need a Phillips screwdriver. You can see this one is pretty tiny. I will link to a set that I like to have on hand in my craft room so that you have a whole bunch of different size options available. Some other things that are nice to have are some rubber gloves to protect your hands, some wipes or paper towel to clean up any spills, and some type of tray to protect your work surface. And I placed my syringes in it when I was sucking out the ink, so it was just a nice place to put things so that my workspace wasn't covered with ink. All right, I think that's everything, so let's get started. So depending on your printer, it will be a little bit different on how you open up your top for the Epson ET15000. You just open the lid and there is a little stand right here that will hold it open. Inside, it's a little difficult to see because the lid does get in the way, but there are one, two, three, four, five, six screws, I believe. Yep, six screws. You'll want to unscrew all of those. Um, I know it gets a little bit nerve wracking when you start unscrewing things. So documenting it, taking pictures, filming, so you know where to put everything back that's really helpful. So I'm going to unscrew these six screws and then show you what to do next. So once you have all the screws out, this piece, it kind of pops up. Oh, I missed a screw. One right at the front here. So if you're pulling it out and feeling like you're forcing it, double check to make sure you got all the screws. So seven screws total. And then this piece pops up and out. I didn't take mine off. I just swung it to the side and put it right there. This piece I don't think comes out all the way. So I didn't want to risk it and I just left it hanging and it ended up working great. So the next thing you want to do, this print head, depending on where your printer turned off, it gets locked in the side. So I haven't really figured out a way to move this after the printer's off. I got lucky when I was emptying the ink and it was kind of positioned over a little bit further. So you may want to play around with that because it is not movable once it's off. So let's power it on and see what happens so you can see what I'm talking about. So I powered it on and I heard the whole carriage move across the top. I don't know if we can move it while it's powered on. It looks like I can kind of fight it. I don't know if I'd recommend that because I'm getting an error code, but I did need my carriage in the middle. I don't know how good that is for your printer to force it. So you can see that I'm getting a printer error. Um, let's see what happens if I turn it off and on again. I'm gonna power my printer so you can see what happens to the print head after moving it manually. So the error message is gone. And then if we open up our printer, so you can hear that the print head is still moving. We didn't break it. And then if I lift up this part, you can see that it's moved all the way over. So one way that we could have avoided pushing it manually is if you were to power it off at this 
point right here. So you could open up your lid and watch and then unplug it when it's more central so that you're not working in the corner. So I would just force, let's see if I powered it off right now. So it'll continue moving over to the right. So I would just force unplug it so that it stops. And then that way I have it central to where I need to work on it. Again, I'm not sure if that's the best move, but I do like having my print head over more in the center. So now what I'm going to do is grab this little white piece and move it out of the way. And you can see that I have better visibility of what I need to see. Okay, so this part is a little hard to see, but what we need to do is we need to get this black piece off. And I, full disclosure, did crack mine a little bit. My printer's still functioning, but this part was a little difficult. So underneath here, there are some clips and some tiny, tiny little baby screws. So the baby screw right here on the outside, can barely even see what I'm doing here, but it's just a teeny tiny little screw. And you wanna unscrew it and grab it so it doesn't fall into the printer. And then there's a little clip and you wanna unclip it. Once you've unclipped it, you'll grab this blue handle and move it forward to get it out of your way and then you're able to pull this up and out. So there's that little tiny baby screw that I unscrewed and then this whole black cover I took off and put that to the side. For the next part, you don't need to move this out of the way. If you are overwhelmed with getting everything back, you don't need to move this out. I was able to get a lot of the ink out without taking this piece off, but it is easier to empty out these little cartridges if you move it out of the way. So to do that, there's a spring here. We're going to unclip the spring. You can either do it from the blue or the black part. And then that way this little spring is hanging right there. And you have two big screws that you're going to take out. So just on the left and the right side. And you will open the tabs on the side and kind of lift that up out of the way. So once this is unclipped, I didn't disconnect the whole thing. It kind of just moves a little bit like this. And I was able to access all of the ink tubes as well as pulling out these little cartridges. And that's what I needed to access to. So I left everything connected so that I could easily reassemble it. So let's take out the ink and move through that process. Now that everything's disconnected, put on your rubber gloves and you'll pull out one color, whatever ink color you wanna start with, disconnect that from your clear little cartridge. Open up the coordinating colors tank so that air can come through, that will help suctioning easier. Then you'll use this green tip on your syringe and connect it to the ink tube. The green tip fits really nicely within the ink tube. So you push it on until there's a good seal and then we are going to just syringe out the ink. It will be difficult to pull since the seal is pretty tight and it takes a lot of force to get the ink moving. So just pull until you can't pull anymore. And then I emptied my ink into an extra ink bottle. So if you are saving this ink or you need this ink, empty it into whatever container you want. But I emptied it out into an extra container since I am just going to recycle that ink. I thought you'd be able to see the ink going down here, but since the cyan kind of stained the tank, you can't really see it going down. But I knew that it was empty when I got a big gush of air in my syringe. So I emptied out that ink into my extra ink container. And then I put the syringe on just to ensure that it was empty. And when I pulled it for the second time, I pull it here and you can just see a whole bunch of air going to my syringe. So I knew that that line was empty. Once you know that there's no ink flowing, you can take out this next piece, which I believe is the print head. I keep on calling it the print head, but I'm actually not sure. So we're going to take that little tank out and remove the extra ink that you can see spilling out there. So I'm going to use the same green syringe and suck out as much ink as I can over a tray since it was getting very messy. So just use a tray or a plate so that you don't spill ink everywhere and suck out as much ink as you can from that little cartridge. You can see there, that's where I'm putting my extra ink. Once it's empty, I reconnected the tube 
and installed the little cartridge. And now I'm going to fill up my tanks with my new ink that I'm using. So I didn't reassemble everything just yet. I am just going to make sure everything's connected and then refill my ink tank with the new ink. I'm refilling my printer with inkjet ink, but it was from a different eco tank, so it didn't have the correct keyed bottles. So I filled up my syringe using the needle tip, and then I am just going to fill up the tanks using the syringe to make it a little easier. So if you had the correct ink, you can just place it onto the keyed holes and fill it up that way. So now that all of our ink has been installed, we're going to put everything back together the way that we took it apart. So if you remember, we took out those two screws. So I'm just going to line this back up and let it click together so you can hear that little click. Okay, so those screws are back in and we'll want to hook back up our spring. Pretty easy peasy. Place this cover back on. You actually don't need to put this cover back on, but since I want to make sure everything goes back correctly, I'm going to instruct you to put everything back. So we'll make sure that everything clips back down into place. Like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I did break that clip right there. My, my printer is functioning, but full disclosure there, I did break that. And then to hold it secure, you're going to use the little baby screw and it goes into a little slot right there. I know it's really hard to see. Let me see if I can get a better angle for you. One second. It does not want to focus there, but you can see that little baby screw. You just want to make sure you line up that hole. So now that that hole is screwed back down, we want to make sure that this lever is pushed back. The only reason you would push this forward is if you're transporting your printer. So this needs to go back right here, and then we'll slide the white piece back over the top, making sure to avoid the blue part so it goes underneath that right here. Underneath that little blue clip, make sure everything's lined up and then screw back all seven of your screws. All right, let's run some nozzle checks. So I'm going to do a print head nozzle check. So I selected that and then I have paper loaded in and I'm printing out this test. If your results look like mine and are pretty splotchy, then you will need to do a print head cleaning. So you'll just follow the prompts on your printer and you can see that my results looked closer to the left. So I selected the X and then ran this print head cleaning. I anticipated that my results probably wouldn't be great and ended up doing a few print head cleanings. So you can see here, here are my results and it wasn't looking great. So I ran three of those and they still weren't looking good. And I clicked on the power cleaning option and it said that I should wait 12 hours without printing and come back and check my results. So I did that and my results were still bad. So I knew I needed to do a power cleaning. So I came back the next day and decided to run that. My maintenance box was full and what a power cleaning does is it empties out your lines of your printer, the lines that you saw me sucking the ink out of. It will force ink through those lines, through the print heads, and then it will empty out into this maintenance box. I have run a few power cleanings in the past because of clogs in my print heads and therefore my maintenance box was full. I do want to mention that if you run power cleanings too often, you could shorten the life of your printer. So you do want to use a power cleaning as a last resort. So I knew that and I knew that if I didn't run a power cleaning, I wasn't going to get any good print quality. So I needed to run a power cleaning. Replacing the maintenance box was pretty easy. I ordered one off of Amazon and I just took off the cover, replaced it, and then put the cover back on. As a reminder, at this point, I had run three print head cleanings. I waited 12 hours and then I did another print head nozzle check and my lines were still broken. So I knew that this was my last ditch effort and I needed to run that power cleaning. So I chose maintenance and then power cleaning. And again, it will tell you all the things that I just told you. And you'll want to make sure that you have enough ink 
in your tanks in order to flush it out. So I needed to indicate that I had filled everything back up to the upper line and then that way it, my printer knew I had enough ink in there. Okay, so you'll wanna make sure that you read through all of these terms of use and agree, so make sure to read through those. And then it kind of just explains where the ink is going. And once you're good to go, you'll hold that OK button for five seconds. It did take about 10 minutes to run through the power cleaning since it's pushing all that ink through your system. And then after I ran my purge file and I had ink flowing, which was such a good sight to see. And I was so excited to see inkjet ink coming out. I decided to run a print head alignment after that just to make sure that everything was lined up since we moved around a lot of things during the ink removal process. So I decided to run a vertical and horizontal alignment check and now my printer is ready to go. So you can see that all of the sublimation ink is out and my printer is just printing with the new Epson inkjet ink that I installed in it. So if you are trying to swap out sublimation ink for inkjet ink or vice versa, you have inkjet ink in your printer and you want to replace it with sublimation ink, this is possible. It may say, seem a little bit overwhelming when you first get started, but using the supplies that I recommend, it ended up being a lot easier than I anticipated. So take a look at the supplies in the video description. You can click down there and find the different tools I used, um, including the big syringe, which was so helpful and made this process so much easier. So check out that link. And if you have any questions, make sure to drop those in the comments because I'm happy to help you since I do know that this is a little overwhelming. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like it and consider subscribing to my channel to check out more sublimation tutorials and other craft videos. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.